Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Godzilla News of the Day podcast. Yet another entry today having to do with a very fascinating story. Quite tragic when you think about it because of the huge, absolutely huge missed opportunity. Just pure bad luck that happens to be uh, on this guy's shoulders. And it ties in one of my favorite topics which involves casinos. So this one is a story that I found on Yahoo which led me to here to the New York Post. By the way, if you're wondering why I do these news of the day, a lot of you have asked before about me doing like live streamings, um, I guess either on YouTube or on Facebook. I am actually toying with the idea if I find something to do, like let's say on the paranormal side, where I can go visit a place and then do a live stream of some kind. But that's just something in the meantime, this is the closest that I'll do to live topics because it's a news of the day type stuff every single day, just covering one new interesting topic to share with you here but in this one it has to do again with just this unfortunate terms bad luck whatever you want to call it that befell this guy a guy by the name of Jan Flato he lost out on a hundred thousand dollar jackpot at a slot machine located at the casino called the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino there in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So here's how it went. So this guy, Jem Flauto, age 66, he was playing a huge bet, betting machine. Uh, normally, like on my end, I'm betting like a dollar up to five dollars a spin. That's my maximum. And even then, I'm cringing when I'm playing five dollars because if I only play let's say up to about uh, maybe 10 times, that's it, I'm out, um, and, and if nothing hits, then I am gone. But I've seen other people where they play even larger ones, like they play $10 machines, $25 machines, I've even seen $100 machines being played. Those are the ones where every single spin is $100, and they're playing the maximum bet, which is sometimes two, three, or five times the bet itself. So unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable how some people um, can, can spend that much money Either A, they're living on some kind of inheritance or they have some kind of sustainable income. Like let's say uh, people that own a bunch of properties that if they lose money on, on these slot machines, all they got to do is just raise their rent. Or they're just flat out broke. Like they're basically just living off of pennies because of everything they spend on there. Anyways, no indication about this guy and whether he was someone that was in that category but he was playing a fifty dollar spin game called a double top dollar machine again this was at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino he happened to have his friend a lady by the name of Marina Navarro there with him too it sounded like she was watching him play and that he brought her along for luck now it doesn't say like if they knew each other for a long time or if they just became acquaintances right there at the casino but here's where things turn so bad for this guy he decided to give marina the chance because he considered her good luck to play one spin in other words on this 50 dollars spin game and then that way see what the results are like it was almost like you could tell he was saying, okay, you know, just one spin, uh, Marina, just let's see how it goes, just for fun. And she did it, and then absolutely sure enough, it was during that spin that it landed on the jackpot, which was $100,000. Amazing, right? One only dreams about this kind of stuff when it comes to playing these machines. The idea that it'll land either on the three stars, the three eagles, whatever is the case, but yes, in this case, it happened for him. The machine started doing the usual bells and whistles that are known whenever there's a jackpot of this kind. Everybody swarmed over. It was amazing. It was a great time. He was going to be so happy. But then, whenever the casino, because as is usual on these things, they have people surround the, the workers, in other words, surround the machine to make sure nothing is tampered with. They uh, generally work with the recipient right then and there, like they take them to an office to help sign some documents. And all the meantime, of course, they're making sure the machine is untouched. They're probably taking pictures, whatever is the case. And no doubt, surveillance footage is capturing everything above. They're doing all of this to make sure that nothing is considered illegal in that sense. Um, but the surveillance, while it didn't find anything illegal, like in other words, the um, the, the, the jackpot was one perfectly fine. The surveillance 
surveillance revealed that it was truly her, Marina, that pushed the button. Now, if you're wondering why this matters, it's because of this. The casino ruled that anybody that touches the button, they are the recipients of that jackpot. So it could be you if you have your finger on the button or it could be your friend if they have their finger on the button. Such was the case in this example. Once the casino reviewed the footage and they looked at it, they turned they deemed that he was not the winner. She was the winner and guess what? She absolutely went ahead and took everything. Like she wasn't going to be uh that kind of friend where she said, "No, no, 50% of it is mine, 50% of it is his." Or that another case 100% of it was his because it was his money that was being used in the spinning uh, of the slot machine no in this case she pushed a button and once they declared her the winner then she in turn left him pretty much right then and there and then went to obtain the money and he said in the New York Post article he quoted you know stating Marina what are you doing and after she just got up and walked away and then that was the last he heard of her uh, he did get a text from her later on what she was asking him do you still hate me something along those lines and then that's when he responded that 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 of course you know how could she do that to him in her defense uh, she just was doing everything legally like she pushed the button uh, she was declared the winner and so she decided to get the funds she was going to try she said uh, later on to give him some of the winnings but once he decided to offer or to do something involving threatening text to her no doubt he was so pissed off with regards to what he lost because of that one single push of a button done by her that that she in turn decided no i'm not going to give him any of the money and that's that so this is a good lesson for everyone out there <clears throat> Because I have heard of this happen, not like, let's say, jackpot winners having this happen, but I've heard of people trying to do this at the casinos. If you have a situation where you're playing at the casino, sitting down on the slot machines, and then you have people or one person, generally it's actually a woman, and I, I read all this actually because it's on TripAdvisor. There are forums out there too for um, casino slot machines like where, where people post like, where's the best place to play? Well, general tips, guidelines, that kind of stuff. And people are stating that sometimes there's a trend where uh, people will sit around, let's say yourself, you're playing a game, they'll sit close by you and they'll just start talking to you. And then they'll start asking, and generally these are women actually, they'll start asking, hey, can I play a few rounds? You know, they may be flirty, they may be uh, a little bit more intimate, just trying to see if they can push some of the buttons. And the whole reasoning for that is, if maybe the, the the game itself may not pay the jackpot, but if it pays a big win, like let's say, uh, I don't know, $2,000, something along those lines, $1,500, then the person at that point, because they push the button, they can then immediately call security, they can call management, whatever is the case, and then say, look at the cameras, look at the cameras, it's me, I pushed the button, and then the claim is theirs. There has been that case going on. Not, not, now, in this particular situation, it may not be uh, it, that this occurred here because it seemed like they were friends. But again, I don't know how long they were friends. Like, did they just meet up there or was it somewhere before? Who knows? But because they had previous, their phone numbers from before and she was texting him afterward, it made it seem like they knew each other beforehand. So I don't think that was the case in here. But it is a truly something that can happen at the casinos where people will start to strike up conversations. They'll start asking about pushing buttons, all for the whole purpose of trying to see if one of those can lead to a somewhat of a big payout and then they can claim that money for for them but I'll include the link below but uh, uh, from the New York Post but isn't that a huge bummer imagine if you're playing these games imagine if you go to Vegas like I do then someone else happens to push that button that money is legally theirs and there's nothing you can do about it because all the surveillance in the world that's in that casino will showcase otherwise crazy crazy stuff so all right everybody thanks again as always take care